That's going to be noisy. Yeah, this is noisy. You want some, some under? Oh, okay. Yes, you have it running now. <laughs> You're on the road. I'm on the road. In the snow. Okay, in the snow. That's and when we started that. The they went by. The they were, man. how would you say, they were at the train station. You always had somebody supersiding the station master, right? Mm -hmm. But it had also a reason because you had troop transports and they had to help out, you know, when they came in. So therefore, they weren't there to watch us. Or so I have to say that now. Mm -hmm. They were just saying we should not uh, take the train because there was no danger, right? That the troops were fighting back and we should stay. And that was a, li a lie, or I mean, their propaganda mm -hmm. line mm -hmm. to get back to that. Not uh, some policy. It was just. Uh, the judgment of somebody, yeah, saying, "Oh, our village is fine." Yeah, mm -hmm. well, it was mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, we are on the road and hoping my grandmother is at the best. At least she could stay in the warm. There was a mm -hmm. oven and things and food. I mean, things were, were good in that little village, and mm -hmm. uh, the farmers were there, so the food situation wasn't as drastic. And mm -hmm. yes, in Berlin, uh, we were on the road, and that's when it got drastic. We had some bread along, we had some drinks along, we had some lard along, because we knew, you know, there was no place you could do anything because we knew from the radio that everybody was on the run from further east, right? Mm -hmm. So then we had in mind, I knew the road past the train station, I had walked it often to the uh, camp from the Arbeitsdienst, right, that's that mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. and I thought we'd go to the next little town and maybe get a hotel or something. Well, and the, the snow got worse, the wind got worse, and the people on the road were so bad that you didn't make much headway. Mm -hmm. and, and mainly bitter cold, and then naturally uh, you heard the attacks coming closer. So anyhow, night came and we weren't anywhere close to this little town. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we went into a what you would call a hay barn, a barn where the farmer keeps uh, the hay on, on the bottom and maybe there's tools, right? Mm -hmm. And there were ladders, and so we called upstairs thinking it was more warm. Mm -hmm. This is in the bitter winter, right? And so we found some hay and with hundreds of other people, right? Mm -hmm. And being tired, and trying to save our suitcases, which then we still had along. We went to sleep, and then the next thing woke us up was yelling and doing, and I had no idea what was going on. I looked down, and the tank, Russian tank, oh had come in, and the people who were laying down there, or being down there, were partly waltzed over. Mm. And then the tank went back out. Luckily, he didn't shoot anybody, but naturally, we still had to climb down from the ladder. Mm -hmm. This is about when I first dawned on me, it isn't so good in the country either. I see the same bloodshed as I see mm -hmm. in Berlin. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, then we went back on the icy road, and then my mother couldn't anymore, so the first thing we do, did is left our suitcases. We only kept our jewelry what jewelry she had, she knew she could sell that and make money out of it. She kept that on her body and the money, and we kept our papers, and we put on as many jackets as we could, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, A, then we weren't that attractive for the Russians, and B, mm -hmm. then we had some clothes, right? Mm -hmm. And then we just left the suitcases with thousands of others laying around, because most people who didn't have a, a horse, mm -hmm. a, a carriage, a wagon, mm -hmm. Maybe a car by a soldier had to do that, right? And and then we uh, finally reached this little city. Is it the second day? That's the second day mm -hmm. after this thing, uh, thing incident there in the barn. Mm -hmm. And then these people there insisted that the Russians couldn't be that close. And then the people we were with were real mad and said. You nuts! We're coming from them. We lost people last night, no. mm -hmm. and uh, 
So then in this little town we didn't find anything. It was so overrun with people mm -hmm. that you couldn't even sleep on a park bench if you would have found one, right? So we kept, I said, Mom, then the next thing is Stettin. Stettin is the big harbor. And I said, if there we should find that one of the bigger trains should still leave from there because Stettin is not, uh, I assumed, because I didn't have any access to radio or thing of it all, just guessed that maybe going that way the Russians hadn't broken through. Mm -hmm. So that took us another good day and half of the night we got to Stettin. And I had to go into a farmhouse about the last day and, and the lady was nice enough. She gave me a sled. She didn't want anything because money wasn't mm -hmm. exactly the thing you could do something with. Right. And I couldn't give her any food because we needed hours, right? Bread and thing, and she said, just take it and put your mom on there. So then I had mom on the sled, mm -hmm. and the snow was so, uh, thanks God, so glittery uh, from all the horses and wagons, so it wasn't hard to pull, right? It was more like ice, mm -hmm. right? So I pulled her most of the time, and when she could, then she walked again, you know, but she just... So then we got to the main sta train station in Statine. And I had never seen anything like it. The all the, picture a huge train station like America had probably many too, was six or eight or ten mm -hmm. uh, trains leaving at the same time. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, a trains weren't inside, but the, the station was full with people like a carpet. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next thing was, then they said there was one coming in going to Berlin, and we were just lucky to be on that, how do you say, on that level. level. Mm -hmm. If we would have been on A, 9, 10, mm -hmm. 11, we couldn't have gotten over there, not even over the, the mm -hmm. train tracks, right. because it was all full. Right? Mm -hmm. And so the train moved in, and then I saw that we could never make it to the door. Mm -hmm. So someone was already in there coming from some place and opened the window. Mm -hmm. And I wondered how easy that was that we all got in there in that window, yeah, that for my mother had come up. And I realized mm -hmm. we weren't standing on the level mm -hmm. of the plateau where usually trains leave, mm -hmm. where the door is and there you yeah, are. Yeah. There were layers and layers uh -huh. and layers mm -hmm. of suitcases, clothes, oh, my Lord. just everywhere, just yeah. like you were. Uh, like you were taking something and say, we do that instead of asphalt, mm -hmm. right? right? And we were as high as the window, but right. I didn't even realize that because we were standing like fish, right? right? So, and I, I said, okay, mom, get in the window. And I remember, I can't get in the window. I said, look, it's real easy. And then we both said, why is it easy? Yeah, and that was... And then when the train pulled out, I was not on the window, but some people told me, looking back, it looked like all of Germany got rid of their, and this was just one little station, mm -hmm. of their suitcases That's and their so mattresses, so mattresses, yeah. because now, see, the wagons, some people who were farmers had brought their horses and wagons mm -hmm. and were trying still mm -hmm. to get the train because they knew they couldn't make it by, the, had nothing for the horses, right? So they had to yeah. leave the horses, go to yeah. fence for themselves, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. And so they tried to get the train, so all their stuff was there. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And then babies yelling who lost their mothers, right? And then there was a children transport, you know, from evacuation. They were trying to get back into Berlin. Mm -hmm. And then these kids yeah, crying. Yeah. Well, they were bringing them back to the parents because they knew they couldn't leave them east. Right, yeah, well, yeah. Right? Yeah, sure. And then they had people, two, two kinds of people were on the train. The one part was from the Wilhelm Gustloff. Mm -hmm. That was a big ship who got torpedoed by the Russians mm -hmm. and had some survivors. And some of them were in our train. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of off and yelling and doing mm -hmm. because they were in this icy water. Right? Mm -hmm. And. Uh, and most of them are dead. If you read the story of the Wilhelm Gustloff, that was a that was a, a ship. It was an amusement ship Hitler had built for the workers to go on cruises. Mm -hmm. And 
then everybody tried to come out of East Prussia. They came across the ocean, right? Look, like this, across. Mm -hmm. It's a big bay, mm -hmm. they came like this. Mm -hmm. And the Russians torpedoed them. Mm -hmm. I forget how many hundreds lost their lives when that ship went under. But they, uh, the Navy fished some out, and some of them, maybe 10 or 11, were in our train. Mm -hmm. They were spread all over, you know, who was surviving, who was dying, who was... And then, then, and then it took us two days because there were constant air raids on the train. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, people on the door were, were running out and doing what we usually do on the train, run out and, and take cover. Mm -hmm. But with all that snow around, we said, they see anyway the train. And if they hit, they hit. So we were just looking at each other because many trains were blown up. Yeah. We had a red cross on top, but that mm -hmm. didn't mostly mean anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, people put that up in the hope it would help. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, I think some of them were machine gunned. I forget if we had dead in the, because you have a, a train with, what, 15, 16 wagons, right? So mm -hmm. by the time we got to Berlin, I had no idea, you know, who who made it and who did. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So that was it. And in Berlin, it took us another half a day. There was no subway going. This was beginning of February by then. And some of them were gone. Some of them weren't. Some trolleys were gone. Some of them weren't. Berlin looked like the youngest day, I thought. Mm -hmm. And someone told me it looked a lot worse. Than 45 in uh, April when and it came to an end, mm -hmm. but I thought it couldn't have been worse than what it looked then. Mm -hmm. And I, we found our old apartment, and my dad had left a note, in case you come, so we stayed there. And he came, and he said, we said, come with us, come with us. He mm -hmm. said, you know if I do, I have no papers to do so, to leave here, you know, from my fire station. Yeah, I am what we call in Berlin a head shorter, right? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So we said goodbye, and we said, well, you have a Feuerwehr fire company, mm -hmm. and they're not going to do anything because it says fire company. Well, it was a black uniform, mm -hmm. and the Russians thought it was SS. He mm -hmm. couldn't convince them that he wasn't SS, so that's how he got into Russian imprisonment. Mm -hmm. When they finally came to Berlin, they came and got my father. I mean, we didn't know that then. By then we were in Stuttgart. So, but a lot of them with him because they had, it was a black uniform with a red thing here showing a fire truck. Mm -hmm. But it, oh, do SS, yeah. And then they just took him. And then the ones who believed it said, well, do Nazi, come on. So <laughs> they, took him to Siberia after they, and he was lucky he could keep his shoes. Most of them lost their shoes. Mm -hmm. He just lost his radio. He had a little radio, was a big thing then, a portable with a battery. Mm -hmm. That was a real big thing. Mm -hmm. Battery was yeah. big, yeah. yeah. And uh, you kind of put a kind of thing in it. was real chic. It was into a leather suitcase. Mm -hmm. But the Russians took that right away from him. They took, I mean, they took everything under the sun because they never saw mm -hmm. a toilet, they never saw a, right? I mean, they, they took the toilets, they took everything mm -hmm. you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And then my dad said we should get out of town. We knew that women get raped because on the road we saw a lot of women who were already, you know, through this mm -hmm. breakthrough and were raped by the Russians. And, so everybody had soot in their face, and, but they were all, all on to us, you know, and found the women anyway, and besides they raped up to 70, right, so, mm -hmm. years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we uh, went again to the train station, to a different one, that's the Anhalterbahnhof, which doesn't exist anymore now, mm -hmm. and took a train to Stuttgart, and we were lucky, that was also one of the last ones, leaving Berlin. Because then uh, the uh, bombardment started, which lasted for months with the Russians. 
and he couldn't get out of Berlin anymore. And we, left, we uh, took the train and came to Stuttgart. <clears throat> and then my dad told me later our mail was still coming to our old apartment in Berlin mm -hmm. because my dad always went there to look mm -hmm. if it was still standing, mm -hmm. which it was, and in sad, you know, no windows, no mm -hmm. water, sh water damaged, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad told me that he had torn up my order to come to a flak company, which is a, you know, flak air defense. Mm -hmm. uh, they had women for that, and he said, I never told you because then if anything happens, then I can take the responsibility. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would have had to legally turn around while I hit oh, Berlin yeah. and go east, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because then they, mm -hmm. before the women shouldn't do this and women shouldn't do that, and later mm -hmm. women did, when, were supposed to do everything, right? right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, but he told us that at the end of the event, I saw him again. He went to imprisonment for a year, and then it took him a year. He was discharged on being too old and too sick. There was a Russian doctor, female, who decided he could go, which was rare. But it took him a year to get back to Germany because there weren't any it wasn't like he could go to Moscow and take a train to Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> so he had to go from each day a little bit and get a ride from here and get a ride on a horse carriage there. So he made it to Stuttgart to find us at my sister's another year later. By then, Stuttgart was occupied by the French. Now. My mom and I, we stayed in Stuttgart in my sister's apartment, and that's another little twinge. It was empty. My sister was evacuated with her. Her husband was on the East Front, and my sister was evacuated to the Black Forest with her two children because the bombing was so bad. Mm -hmm. And that was called a mother-child home. And it was in a very pretty, we knew from before the war, kind of resort town in the Black Forest. Mm -hmm. And my mother and I kind of, again, took little trains, big trains, rides, mm -hmm. and made it to the Black Forest to see my sister. Mm -hmm. Because she had said, uh, we could even call her. We, we found the phone and we got through, which was rare. I mean, our phones, we could call anyone, but nothing functioned anymore. So we got through to her and she said, come on out and help me to come back to Stuttgart mm -hmm. when the war is over. And we said, oh, when do you think it's over? Because we already experienced the Russians, right? Mm -hmm. So we went to the Black Forest and stayed with her in this home. They had a room and that's where about another four weeks, five weeks, to the, the French came down. Mm -hmm. and those were Moroccan troops. Um, they did their share of, <laughs> you know, hand grenades for the for the fish and rape for the younger women. So we put a, uh, there were big closets for clothes at that time. Mm -hmm. And we put that in front of the door and all night they rampaged outside the door mm -hmm. being drunk, right? So then the, the real, what we call the real French came in in some order got established. This is where the story fits in, where then for three or four weeks before you're allowed to go out in the street again mm -hmm. and get a laissez-passer uh, piece of paper who says you're allowed to move around. And uh, it's when I met the mayor, mm -hmm. who's a French commandeur, colonel, Mm -hmm. who I had to ask for transportation for this mother home because those were about 40 mothers with children, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, can we have a big truck? We could all stand up and where are you going to get a big truck from? And I said, well, 
you have these coal trucks, can't we put them on there? And then he finally gave me the papers, and that's when I talked to the mayor, and that was the father, and he told me his son was killed. That's where that story comes in. Mm -hmm. Now we have 1945, and we call it the Hour Zero. The Hour Zero started in Berlin, also with nothing but a weight, so I was very thankful. I was not there because all my girlfriends went through that. Yeah, the uh, doctors, if they could find them, had free range of uh, abortion because uh, the government gave a, we had no government, the, the commandant too gave permission they could have abortions, otherwise mm. we would have had a flood of... Mm. So that was, at least that was saved. I mean, there's more in incidents, but I mean, those were then, we were at my sister's, mm -hmm. and I had just, as you can see, not much of a schooling mm -hmm. what to do. Everything was so destroyed, the factories weren't functioning yet. Mm -hmm. The offices were starting to grasp, you had to put a trolley car in the street mm -hmm. to get workers to, in Berlin, they, they uh, took the women here to go to women again, and they would make lines and just clear the street by hand, and the, the rubble out of the street so people right. could get through, and they called them Trümmerfahren, rubble women, right? And there's even now a little pension for the women who kind of built up this dreadful cities, right? Not build them up. Mm -hmm. Clear them up because the kids played in mountains of rubble with the result that you had all, all the time something exploding and some kid lost their leg and another kid got killed mm -hmm. because you know there's so many uh, blind mm -hmm. bombs, right? right. You know, it's still Berlin it. now when they yeah. build it over five times all of a sudden boom sure. they find find another one a hundred or Oh, they found them. Yeah. Now, with the, with the east, the subway's opening up in the east again. They found, I don't know how many. Yeah. They have to de sharpen them. Some of them are still sharp. Right? So, in, in those days, where would the kids play? They played in those mountains. It was summer. The war was over in May. The kids played on top of the yeah. rubble mountains, we called it. Monte Charbellino. <laughs> So my sister was back with us in her apartment, and it was a house there, and above her was her parents, her husband was in prison, Opa, my father was in prison. Mm -hmm. We didn't know he was gone. And then I got a job with the French, because the language I had the most years but five years in high school was French. Mm -hmm. English I had only two years. So they put me <coughs> oh, on the desk mm -hmm. to tell people where to go. Mm -hmm. And I practiced and practiced, and they thought I was doing pretty good. And then by the summer of 1939, the Americans came took Stuttgart over. There was a collection in occupation force. Mm -hmm. And I said, gee, now I just learned French. I have to brush up on my English, right? Mm -hmm. Because, but at least it gave me, not the money, it gave me a ration per week, especially with the Americans. Mm -hmm. And the Americans, I worked at the, we had a censorship out of me. Cassie had the censorship, would read, take from a German mailbox who started to function, the German post took letters again, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. and they take samples, mm -hmm. couldn't take them. Bring them, open them up. Mm -hmm. We opened them up, the higher ups was called uh, civil censorship, mm -hmm. and they opened them up and they had a certain sealer 
opened by civil censorship, right? Mm -hmm. But only the colonel of that outfit, or actually he had a civilian like Mr. Walt, mm -hmm. uh, was allowed to stamp it. We were not allowed to even touch. We were allowed to open the letter and pass it on. And later they let us seal the letter, but mm -hmm. they measured the band mm -hmm. that we couldn't sell this band. Well, if a Nazi was going to mm -hmm. yeah. give a message out, oh, right, yeah. you could say, open by civil censorship, and he could. Mm -hmm. That's at least what they believed, and I didn't ask who all was trying to go to Brazil, to Argentina, mm -hmm. and, but I'm still convinced the ones who deserved it, mm -hmm. uh, to be in jail or to be punished, got away. Just like, the, have more money connection just than anybody else. It, it, like the Odessa mm -hmm. connection, now mm -hmm. you hear about it, then you didn't know it. But we always said that the, there's even a German proverb that the big ones get away, the little ones get hung or hanged, right? So. Okay, that was the censorship, but then that wasn't, uh, we didn't get a dash until I then started to work. Uh, ironing shorts and doing booms as a chambermaid, that was a lot more lucrative because we got a dash mm -hmm. for doing this. The money did not buy anything unless you had food or something, right? Mm -hmm. And so my ration was a piece of soap, <coughs> donut flour, peanut butter, and two bars of Hershey bars, and a pack of sickle. And that was a lot more worse than what I made. Because a pack of cigarettes would buy me some butter for at home, mm -hmm. some food, which I could have spent my whole month's fashion for, my whole month's salary, I wouldn't have bought me a pound of butter. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, I, of course, that meant after work I had to go across country, take the tra next train, next train, and, and go to farmers to try to exchange mm -hmm. my cigarettes, mm -hmm. my Hershey bar, and sometimes, oh, sometimes got, women sometimes got a pair of nylon, and they were really worth something, and one time I thought, I'm going to keep them this time for myself, but it was, I never managed because we had so much to survive, yeah. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so we took away. brown, we had, somebody had made some brown salve, and we put that on the legs and it looked like they had the stockings on. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was actually the survival. And my mother was then with my father. He came home from imprisonment and they got an apartment near my sister to be finally out from under my sister. Mm -hmm. But that was such a primitive apartment. I mean, it must have been built or it was damaged from the war. It was really, but it was a place they could live. And things were still in this way. That's where it came in handy that I could walk so good. Everybody could walk so good because mm -hmm. transportation was. You, you took the trolley for two stations, mm -hmm. and then you had to walk again. You took it for another mm -hmm. three mm -hmm. stations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tracks mm -hmm. that ground, mm -hmm. holes in the, no bridge. So you walked mm -hmm. down the river and back up the river when the bridge was gone. Right? Mm -hmm. Then you were on the other side. There was a trolley <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> and then, then they fixed the, the railroad bridges. We went out in the country to get some food. We were hanging out because the trains were so full mm -hmm. on the outer step, right? Mm -hmm. And here's these railroad bridges just fixed up. Mm -hmm. there, is no, there is no banister or anything, right? Mm -hmm. And under me are all the picturesque rivers of the Black Forest. <laughs> like you think, they were, scared. they were scared. That's why, if you had luck and come into the train and could stay at the toilet, that was the best place. <laughs> but anyhow, going in the country was a pastime then, <laughs> if you had something to exchange. Mm -hmm. People, here comes in now. My mother's jewelry, people's silver, 
people's knives and forks out of silver. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, something real valuable was that uh, first French made you give away all.